and welcome to another midday recipe and this one is a very 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 special recipe that we're sharing today because it's an Easter recipe which is really really exciting because I just get to have a lot of fun with food, love Easter, love Halloween, can't wait till we do Halloween together, that's going to be an awesome one. <laughs> If you can make vegan food look gruesome, it's great. It's really, really great. My um, uh, my tofu eyeballs are a speciality. They are so disgusting that they actually sh uh, scare children. So, got a few months on that. But let's so let's get to today's recipe, which is our Easter bunny pancakes. Uh, so I'm just gonna get our live up here so that I can make sure that I can see you guys okay and that you can see me. I can't see you, but I can see your comments. I can see your comments, which is what this is all about. We want your comments. That's what a live is all about. Um, so we've already got Colleen. Good morning from New Jersey. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. We get a lot of American people coming onto our show. And one day we are gonna play the, do we have all of the states of America in our show? I think that's going to be a good game. So this is what we are making today. You guys might have already seen the picture that I shared of this this morning. Uh, this is our Easter bunny. He doesn't have a name yet, which is sad. An Easter bunny should have a name. So if you can think of any suggestions, Ingrid, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, so this is our Easter bunny. Uh, it's just a really, really super simple but effective recipe, uh, which I think is really, really important for you guys at the moment because if you can't get these, uh, you know, specialist ingredients, you know, if you're just using what you've got at home, you need recipes like this. So I'm going to give you lots of different options today of how you can swap out what I've used for things you might have in the cupboard. So, um... Easter bunny pancakes. This is what we're making today. Um, oh, Jenny, morning from Oakwood, Derby. Derby, a fellow Midlander, hello. Okay, uh, there is a rainbow in my kitchen. There is always a rainbow in my kitchen. That's just how we roll <laughs> in this house. We have rainbows in our kitchens, do you not? Uh, I think everyone watching this should make sure that they have a rainbow in their kitchen today. Whether that be an actual one or a metaphorical one, <laughs> whichever, uh, it's always nice to have a rainbow in your kitchen at the moment. So there is a rainbow around here somewhere, somewhere, and it's your job to find the rainbow. And we have some really expert rainbow spotters on the show, so you best be quick. Um, there is no prize apart from pride. <laughs> Were you ever told that as a kid? Yes. So anyway, on to our recipe today. Easter bunny pancakes. Really easy, I promise you. It looks like it's going to be complicated, but it's not. Once you have some really simple tricks and tips and chef secrets from me. Okay, so... Da -da -da -da. Oh, we've got uh, Justine, thank you for joining us, and Yvonne from Capes. Cape Thorn, Cheshire. Cheshire is a lovely part of the world. Really lovely part of the world. Okay, let's get on to our recipe today. So, one thing to say is that whenever you are making a dish that looks like a, you know, it's like a face, um, it's quite easy to get it slightly wrong and it end up looking scary or insane or just like it can be like a really easy fail so but there are a few things to remember in order to get it overall like looking good and fun and not scary but you know you remember the scary bits for when it gets to halloween okay at halloween we can do scary bunny yeah right okay you best you best come to that one hello justine Hello, thank you for joining us, and Sue and Michelle. Um, yes, so there's one of the things to remember when you're making a face like this is that essentially what we're doing is we're trying to make it look like a cartoon face. And you know, when we think of cartoons, it's lots of like strong lines, strong lines. So if anything is like a fuzzy line, it can end up looking not very pleasant. So we really wanna go for strong lines, um, you know, like with the eyes, we wanted them to be like, you know, really as round as they can be. Um, if you start using things like sultanas or raisins for the, for the eyes here, then they can start looking a bit weird, not that appealing. 
So the rounder, the better. Um, and what else to say? Oh yes, have your picture of reference, have your reference picture to hand. So whether it's on your phone or whatever, I actually drew mine out before. And this really, really helped me with identifying like, what are these shapes? What are these shapes that I'm putting on? You know, and what, what have I got in my kitchen that I could use for these shapes. So, you know, that really, really helped me, um, helped me figure it out. So there are a few different things that we can use for these different elements today. And I'll talk you through those. Uh, we also have them up on the board there. And I will be posting the written recipe to this actually in our group. So our Facebook group is called The Vegan Chef School Community Hub. The Vegan Chef School Community Hub. So um, please do join us and then we'll add the, the written recipe to there. Um, but of course, you know, you can save this video um, and you can cook along to it at a later time. You can go back, you know, so if there are things that you missed, then you can get me to repeat it. You can stop it at certain places and make me look like an idiot and make me look like I'm like that. <laughs> Which is always hilarious. Um, so, but you know, that's a really, really good thing for you guys to do because then, you know, as you're cooking along, you can get me to speed up or slow down as you need me to. So, okay, onto our pancakes. So first of all, we will make the actual pancakes themselves. So our ingredients here are 40 grams of gluten-free flour with one tablespoon of ground flaxseed. Um, so the gluten-free flour that I'm using today is this. Um, it is a yellow pea flour from a British company called Hobmadods. So these are grown in the UK, produced in the UK, sent to me in the UK, I'm cooking in the UK, you get my drift, right? That's one of the reasons why I love this company. And also just because the, the products are really, really good, really good and very, very reliable. So I'm gluten free. I know not all of you are. Um, so I'm going to give you the substitution for if you're not gluten free. So if you're not gluten free, you can simply sub out these two ingredients, the gluten free flour and the ground flaxseed with 50 grams of plain flour. OK, so 50 grams of plain flour instead of the 40 grams gluten-free flour and the one tablespoon of ground flax and danielle joined us again hello 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 um and i think it's uh, uh michael michael says good morning good morning good morning it's afternoon here now um yes so uh using the gluten-free flour but you can't use any gluten-free flour it's just that this is the one that i happen to have in my kitchen at the moment so i'll put my gluten-free flour on there into there excuse me, with our ground flax. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of sugar. This is the sugar that I'm using, which is coconut sugar, but you can use any sugar that you're comfortable with eating. I just prefer coconut sugar. Coconut sugar is lovely because it has a really nice caramelly taste. Um, so it isn't just sweet, it's um, sweet and caramelly. And I really, really like that. Um, so we just mix that in with my whisk attachment. Um, I often use this rather than an actual whisk. In fact, I don't even, I don't even have a, an actual whisk. I just have this. Um, okay. And then we will add a little bit of bicarb. So quarter of a teaspoon into there. So you can add a little bit of salt into this if you need to if you need to um but with this this flour it, it, it has a slight savoriness anyway to it just very very slight so a slight saltiness so i know that i don't need to add salt to it but you can and that's a particularly good tip if you're finding that your pancakes don't have much flavor just a tiny bit of salt can really make a huge huge difference okay so colleen said rainbow is above the word bunny yes Colleen, well done. That was very, very quick. Yeah, I had to put, I had to put the rainbow above the bunny today. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Okay, so in our uh, jug, we will add three tablespoons of water and then mix it in. And this is gonna be quite thick. And I'm adding half the amount of water first 
just to get any lumps out. And then I'll add another three tablespoons of water. So in a lot of pancake recipes, you will see uh, in the ingredients list, it will say to add milk or plant milk. You don't actually need milk in a pancake recipe. You can just use water. Okay, so whilst that is thickening slightly, I'm gonna ask you guys if you have any pancake concerns so you know when you guys make pancakes what happens like what are the things that um you know is it that the first one always burns is it that they don't stay together is it that um they're not fluffy enough what is it or are you all pancake experts you might be pancake experts i don't know i don't know let's see um so i've got the pan on here and it's warming up and this is a great tip for making sure that we don't get that first sacrificial pancake because what often happens is the first one that we make it isn't that good and it sticks to the pan and it breaks apart and you know and it just yeah ends up off to the side and and nobody eats it um and the reason why is because the pan hasn't had enough time to heat up so you need to have this pan on for a while or she doing everything else and that should help so uh justine says when i flip them over they end up in a heap oh okay okay so that might be that they're not sturdy enough in order for you to flip them over um it might also be to do with the batter that you're using you know if um it's a bit too thin then it might be that too um so but i would say you know give give this recipe a try these are flippable. I'm not going to flip it today. I'm not. I'm not. Don't. No. Don't. No. No matter how much you ask me, I'm not going to flip them today. No, no, no. <clears throat> no, that could all end in disaster. <laughs> These are the things that you don't want to be doing live on Facebook. <clears throat> okay, Deborah said, mine often stick to the pan, so I break it trying to turn it. Okay, so one good tip for that is... You know, we need to make sure that it is fully loose on the bottom before we're going to flip it over, before we're going to, um, you know, whether that's like flipping it in the air or just flipping it with one of these, you need to make sure that it is completely loose. Uh, otherwise, it is going to stick to the pan. Um, so one method of doing that is to make sure that oil is going right down into the bottom. Um, and you know you can just use something like this to add drops of oil. Because quite often when we're using oil from a bottle, it adds far too much and it drowns the pancake and it isn't very, very nice. Um, you know, you end up getting like quite an oily pancake. But if you use something like this, then you can just use tiny, tiny drops and put them around the edge and make sure that that goes right under the bottom. And then, you know, you should be able to shake your pan like this and see that it's loose. If you can't see, if it's not shaking about in the pan, when you do that, don't flip it. Don't flip it because it is gonna be stuck to the bottom. Okay, so we'll just add a few drops in this. And just, just to highlight to you guys, you know, I am using um, a very, very small pan. This is actually um, an egg pan, which of course I don't use for eggs. And I'll add a third of this mixture to here. And as I'm pouring it, you can see I was just moving around. Okay. And you can, when you're using, uh, sorry, when you're making pancakes, because you can mess around with the temperature. So you can start it on like quite high temperature and then reduce it. That's absolutely fine. Quite often with pancakes, I'm doing that. I'm raising it and, and lowering it quite often. And just kind of like reading like what's happening with the pancake. You know, you can see the edges start to cook first. Um, so you've really got to kind of like judge when's a good time to start prizing it away from the pan and then turning it over. Okay, so any more pancake questions, Easter food questions, bunny questions? <laughs> you know, throw them at me. Okay, so I can see, I don't know if you guys can see, I'll just quickly do this. There we go. Okay, did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see the bubbles? And um, because I've added the bicarb, that's what's going to make 
this fluffy pancake. So that is, you know, the ingredient that is going to help with that. Um, so, but you do just need to be patient because if you try to flip it over when the top is still a bit liquidy, then that's not gonna that's not gonna go well either. This is a non-stick pan, by the way. And see, I've just tested it out there, and I can see that. Um, it isn't coming away quite as nicely as I would want it to. So I'm just going to add a little drop of oil in there. Just to help. Yeah. Ease that bottom bit off the pan. And now we can just flip it over. There we go. Okay, so a lovely golden brown colour. Can I use the same recipe for waffles? Yes, yes, you can. That's a very, very great idea. I would really like to see you make a waffle bunny though. Please, 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 just for me. I'd love to see how, how a, waffle, a waffle bunny is. <clears throat> yes, uh, yeah, that would be a great one. That would be a great one. So, okay, so Colleen, I'm expecting to see a waffle bunny over the weekend <laughs> okay so we just need to get um a plate for this excuse me i forgot to get my plate out earlier um and so the ingredients that we're making today the amount are just for one recipe or one bunny there we go okay the first one is done so the second one and third one usually go a bit quicker. So again, I'm just leading the batter around the pan. And, you know, it is a good idea to try and get, try and get these as nicely as round as possible. Of course, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's a pretty good circle, but still there are bits that aren't, aren't that straight. But as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, <clears throat> because we're basically trying to make like a cartoon bunny, we want lots of like really strong shapes, strong lines, and that's what's gonna make it look like a cartoon like, like, and cute as well. Uh, whereas if we have <clears throat> things that are a bit more kind of like organic looking and a bit, you know, uh, um, you know, edges that aren't so defined, it's not going to create such a lovely bunny, basically. Lorraine said, will you post the recipe at the end? You are standing in front of it. We always post the recipe at the end and we have it here and I speak, speak and I talk it through as well, if I can actually get my words right. <laughs> So we do all of the above. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. These are just the ingredients as well, rather than um, the actual recipe. Yeah. Okay, right, there we go. We'll just add a dash of oil to this because it's dried out a bit too much, which is why this one's a bit browner than the last one. But that's okay, we'll just make sure that we use the lighter coloured um, side. So yes, just back to the uh, recipe. So we will always post the written recipe actually within our group, which is the Vegan Chef School Community Hub. Um, talk through it on here and yeah, I think, I think, that, I think that that's all, all base covered. Hopefully. Here we go and just add a few more drops and our last one. So you should get three small pancakes out of this batter this is going to be quite a thick one so and as i said before you know i am using a very very small pan um you might have you know a bigger a bigger pan but you know a bigger kind of small frying pan i know this is exceptionally tiny um it is for small people like me um and um so you know if you make uh pancakes like this size then of course you're going to get a bigger bunny but it's really really useful for you to use this rather than then have to find 
you know, uh, cutters that are going to be the right size for you. Um, so yeah, you will end up with a, with a bigger bunny, but I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. More bunny to, to eat. Ooh. drops of oil down the side there and that's why this is so so useful and I can smell like you know this is actually going a bit too high at the moment it's cooking a bit quicker than I would want it to there we go okay so nearly done with these um Lorraine said uh, thank you. I missed the beginning. Okay, we will we'll, we'll, we will recap, um, and then there is another question before that. Something about gluten free flour that I missed. Can you just ask that again? Because I it's disappeared off my screen now and I can't see it. Uh, Colleen said it will be delish. No need to change back to regular. Okay. okay so this is nearly done, and I must say, like the one thing that I do have an issue with with these using a small one of these is that this is really big <laughs> so <laughs> I think I need to get a small one to go with my small pan okay so we have our pancakes let me just turn that off um, and we actually only need two for the actual bunny but it's really really good to have three just so that uh, you can choose the one that looks the best you or you can choose the two that look the best um, and you've got more to play around with if you need to okay so Sue said sorry you're late it's okay it's okay because you can watch it on playback you can save the video and you can watch it later but just to recap because I know a couple of people have came in late oh Justine this was the question that I missed can you taste the gluten-free flour no you can't because we cooked it out properly um it is a yellow pea flour but it doesn't really have much flavor of its own i t i said it like it's a little bit salty but that's not a bad thing because it just means that there's more flavor going on in the pancakes it's not a tasteless pancake right so just to recap easter bunny pancakes this is what we're making today in fact this is what we're making today and he doesn't have a name still please tell me what should we call him or her um, so, yes, we're making Easter Bunny pancakes, 40 grams of gluten-free flour. I use yellow pea flour. There we go, yellow pea flour. And added one tablespoon of ground flax to it. If you don't need to be, or if you don't need to make this gluten-free, then just substitute these two ingredients with 50 grams of plain flour. Add one tablespoon of sugar. I use coconut sugar, nice and caramelly, but you use whatever sugar you're comfortable with using. But use sugar, not syrup. And then I added six tablespoons of water, quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Mixed all that in and then we made our pancake. So use some oil, a neutral oil is absolutely fine. Use one of these if you can. It's a godsend when you're making pancakes. Okay, so now we have our three pancakes. As I said, I'll select the best ones. Um, maybe that one for the face. Let me see. And we'll get a, a nice neutral plate because although, you know, I like this plate and this is our like special occasion plates, I want something that's going to really, really make him or her look like really really pop out so let's use a nice white plate and we'll make the face this way around okay so we we'll use that one as the kind of round of the face and then what we need next is the two cheeks so actually let me just pop this on here okay so what we will need is these two cheeks that's the next bit to make uh Kate, Esther, the Easter Bunny. I like that. I really like that. Uh, and Paul said, thank you for the recap as I just tuned in about 20 minutes too late. No worries. No worries. And Sue said, Sam, pancakes, one of the few things my five-year-old grandson will eat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, you know, if you do start experimenting with flowers like this, um, you know, then you can sneak in really good uh, nutritious ingredients into kids without them even realising it because this is made of yellow peas you know which are really really um, good for you 
Okay, so now onto the making of the cheeks. Um, so we will use, maybe this one would be better. And first of all, I'm going to cut it in half. So we have our two half pieces here. And I don't have any cutters um, in my house at the moment because everything's at school, obviously. Um, and so I'm just using a jar. Um, if you're anything like me, always have loads of loads of recycled jars around the house. Uh, Joss said, hey, uh, we only have self-raising flour and can't find plain anywhere. What's the difference? Okay, so basically self-raising flour will have a raising agent in it. Um, so that means that you can substitute these ingredients uh, for your self-raising flour and don't add the bicarbonate of soda. Um, I'm not sure how fluffy your pancakes might be. They might be hugely fluffy. I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to see. That's one thing that I can't, I can't predict. But you can give it a go that way. Okay, so I'm pressing down really, really, really hard. And turning the jar okay and look we've got leftover bits of pancake which is always a good thing here we go and our second cheek right there we go so we've got our cheeks there we go and lots of yummy bits of leftover pancake uh Lorraine says her house is full of jars too. Yes, I know, I know. So it's really, really good when you're like, oh my God, I can use it for this thing. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got our cheeks, but then, you know, if we put our cheeks onto here, you can't really see them. Actually, which way around was Bunny going? Bunny is going this way around. Okay, so if you put your cheeks on here, you can't see them. And as I said before, you know, the trick with making something look like a cute cartoon character figure um, is these um, defined shapes, you know, rounds and lines work perfectly when you're making a cartoon character like this. So that's, that's what we want. Gloria said, Jeff had a rabbit called Dylan. Okay, well, yeah, okay, we've got Dylan and Esther. So we've got two, there we go. We've got Dylan and Esther, the bunny rabbits. So we want to make these more defined and how do we do that? Okay, so we've got some cream here that we made. Um, uh, we actually made it uh, when we did the, the chocolate fudge cake uh, and this was the cream cheese frosting. So this is um, just a mixture of tofu tea cream cheese and icing sugar. But you can use lots of different things for this. You know, so if you've got like a thick yogurt, um, a thick cream, something like that, then you can you can just swap it out for that. There was also a cashew cream that we made yesterday. Again, that would be a really, really great substitution for this. Um, uh, but there's also, you know, like vegan creme fraiche on the market as well now, which is absolutely divine. So anything kind of cream and white would do. And I'm just gonna go around the edges and just turn it. There we go, like a wheel, so that the edges are all covered. And pop that onto Dylan. Yes, I did just lick my fingers. I know, I know, I know, I'm not meant to, but you know, you guys aren't gonna tell anyone. So I'm just dipping the edges in and turning it at the same time. There we go. <laughs> it's really, really hard not to let your fingers when you do this. So hard. Okay. Pop that one on there. Okay. And there you go. We've got our cheeks, which is the first, the first part. Um, and now we'll pop our eyes onto this. So with the eyes, yes, I'm using cream, I'm using the same thing, but you could just use a round of banana. A round of banana would be great because it's uniform, um, it's light coloured as well, so the pupil will um, look quite defined on it, 
which is wonderful. So, you know, if you guys have got that, unfortunately, we've only got banana in the freezer to make an ice cream with. Um, so that's not gonna not gonna look so good. And just as a point of reference, I've got our already finished um, Esther, the bunny here. So I'm gonna pop that next to me because, you know, it's good to have this reference. So you guys can use the picture that I shared earlier today as your reference and just have that next to you because you'll think in your head that you remember exactly where things should go but with a face if any of it is slightly different it can really end up looking a bit weird scary creepy um not like a bunny you know it's just kind of like one of those things okay so we've got our eyes here and i'm using hazelnuts because it's what i've got but for the pupils uh, you could also use berries or chocolate chips. Um, as I said earlier, I tried using sultanas, and but because they're a bit of a strange kind of shape, just didn't look very, very appealing at all. Okay, so we'll just pop these in. And... It's better if the pupils go more towards the centre. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that is the pupils. Um, and now onto the raspberry. So we've only got frozen raspberries at the moment, so I'm just gonna go, have to, go to get one out of the freezer. Um, I didn't I didn't get it out early because I didn't want um, it to start defrosting because if you are using any frozen berries with this what will happen is it will start melting and then the juice will come from it and before you know it, it you know this becomes our Halloween bunny and we don't want that today so let me just go and get my raspberry here we go and just pick out one that is going to be, you know, nice and cute. Now, just to slide out it, pop that on there. There we go, make sure that that is nice and in place. Okay, so I think that that is almost it apart from the apple so it looks like pretty funny at the moment right and not exactly what we're going for but we just have the apple to go and then it will all it will all make sense okay so with the apple uh we're going to use that for the whiskers the ears and the teeth so for the ears you can also use um banana Banana is a great one to use for the ears, especially if you've got quite a bendy banana, then you can use that bend as the ears. Okay, but we're gonna be using apple, apple slices today. Okay, so I've got my two slices here and I'll just cut them in half. We will, so basically we've got these uh, kind of crescent shapes um, and then yes we'll use this again and make the ears let me just make sure that there's no bits on that and then we'll just make the ears so you can decide you know which end is better to be the very kind of like pointy bit at the top go and then we'll just do one that looks the same and I'm matching these up putting one on top of the other so that I can get them to be as much the same as possible and I'm also just going to smooth down that edge just so that that is a bit prettier you know remember I said you know it's all about like clean lines Um, and then 
we can just trim these off. So ba basically we've got these like two devil's horns. Again, something we can remember for Halloween. Um, and we'll just pop these onto our rabbit. Now, how did we do him? There we go. Dylan has his ears. And now Dylan needs whiskers. And so with these two pieces, we just need to make some matchsticks. There we go. And we're making six matchsticks. We'll trim the ends off. We'll leave two long. So these will be our two long pieces. And then we'll have four smaller matchsticks. So let's bring him over, see if you guys can see that a bit better. So obviously, you know, if we put these at the end of his cheeks, what's going to happen is they're going to fall onto the plate. So we can use a very, very tiny amount of the cream from earlier, whatever, you know, cream or yogurt or whatever it is that you're using, and just use a bit of that as the glue. So the long whisker goes in the middle. There we go, and just add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of glue. You don't want to add too much because otherwise it will come out the sides and then again, you won't have those strong lines and we want those strong lines so that we've got a cute, a cute cartoon character. Go, just a dab. Oh, do this one first. Keep it nice and even. Uh, Lorraine said, I love how you were making so much time to make it perfect. I would have eaten it all by now. Yes, yeah, I know. I know. I'm such a perfectionist with this stuff. You know, I'll make something and you know, test it out and Jeff and he'll say, yeah, it's good. It's really, really good. And I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't, I don't want it to be good. I want it to be great. <laughs> it has to be great. And so, you know, I do it again. And then he's like, yeah, okay. It's great now. Okay, so whiskers. We have whiskers. We are nearly there. Nearly, nearly, nearly there. Let's bring these in a bit. But the thing is, you know, you do this once and then it's much easier the next time. And obviously like I am going quite slowly um, with this so that you guys can, can follow along when you guys make your rabbits, your bunny rabbits. Okay, so we need two teeth, which we've got now just from the remaining bit of apple. And then we will finish this little one off. Just pop our in here and they are all going to be like a little bit different to each other but that's cute because it is like you know we've got bunny rabbits with different personalities okay and then you can just tuck the teeth underneath the cheeks and there we go we have dylan our bunny rabbit and esther our bunny rabbits for today. So I hope you guys can see that a lot of what I made today, um, you could swap it out for ingredients that you've got at home. So I will be sharing the recipe with different substitutions for, you know, the eyes, the nose, uh, whiskers, blah, 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 on our group. Um, so please do check it out if you want to make this recipe. If you make this recipe, please, please, please share pictures of it. So that's one of the great things about the Community Hub is that you guys can come in and you can share your pictures, which people have already been doing. Um, or if there's something that doesn't go quite as you thought it would, then we can help troubleshoot it as well. Um, but yeah, we have had people sharing pictures of half-eaten cake because, you know, they ate it before they took a photo of it, which is great, which is really, really awesome. Uh, Justine said it looks cute. Colleen said Jack Rabbit or Dust Bunny. They're very, very, very good names. I'm going to have to make more 
of these bunnies so just so that we have enough for all the names we've got um judy said it looks very cute maria said it's beautiful it is it is it is very cute very cute of course you know you you might want more sweetness with this but just serve it with whatever you know syrup you want to have it on the side and then you can uh yeah pour your syrup on and devour it okay so guys um thank you for joining me for this easter recipe I love how you can just like change the, the position of the ears and you change its expression. <laughs> so, <laughs> hours of fun, absolutely hours of fun. Um, please join me tomorrow for another midday live recipe. We are here every day at midday GMT to share with you a recipe and also our hints and tips and tricks and all of the chef secrets that we've got because we want you guys to be more confident, more creative home cooks. Um, so thank you for joining me today and have a lovely day.